introduce myself and um, and EM, which is the, the topic. So uh, as far as myself goes, I'm um, uh, I'm 67. So um, I, I had a career in um, agricultural research for about 25 years. Um, uh, I, I came from a, uh, a farming family. Um, so I was, I was lucky to be part of growing up on a farm. And, um, but there were too many sons to, to, uh, to, to put them all on the farm. So I had to go and do something else. So I went to university, went to Lincoln, and I studied agriculture, of course. And um, then I worked in, the, um, in agricultural research, beginning with Ministry of Ag. Um, in the days before it was commercialised, and then and then ended up working for Ag Research um, at Lincoln. So, and I've been gone from there for twenty years now. And so, after leaving leaving Lincoln, I um, I set up a company called Nature Farm, and it was really just to uh, grow and expand the EM. Um, Technology. That was the that was the reason behind setting the company up. And um, and uh, for many years we had a not a, a, a charitable organisation associated associated with Nature Farm. So um, out of the out of the proceeds of the uh, sale of, of EM, we would put that into um, we, we would sponsor uh, students and um, and, and various field days and things. So that went on for some years as well. Um, so that was, that was, uh, that's a bit of an introduction about myself. But interestingly, I was just thinking today <clears throat> about going back to the 1980s, 87, to 88 to 90. I attended some very big soil health conferences. Um, and I was the speaker there. So it's quite interesting that sort of 20 odd years later, 22 years later, I'm actually talking to soil and health again. But um, through the late 80s, early 90s, there were some very big um, conferences, soil and health conferences, and I'm talking 300, 400 people. And um, at that time, I, I started to work on uh, organic, farming research and um, <clears throat> through the late 80s, early 90s, we had a quite a big organic farming um, program uh, with, within math and within ag research. And um, we thought, okay, we, we, we thought here is um, our opportunity for organic farming to be um, a big part of agriculture in New Zealand, but it didn't actually happen, you know, unfortunately. Um, it, 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 uh, that whole momentum slowed down and it was really, it was a government um, initiative really that slowed it down. It was, a, it was a government initiative that helped us to grow it initially and then, and then for some reason they slowed it down and they, <clears throat> they took our research programs and broke them into into components, so um, you know, and as you know, as a, in an organic system, you need to have a um, an integrated, holistic uh, kind of farm. Where, whereas the government said, no, we're going to put horticulture in that in that uh, segment, and we're going to put pastoral farming over there, and we're going to put cropping over there. And that's where the, when they split the research into C, Crown Research Institutes, and that's when um, Crop and food came out, or it's now called plant and food, I think. And um, uh, haunt research was part was there, and land care. It was a pity that they the government went that way because they actually split the disciplines off instead of keeping them together. Anyway, that's I got a wee bit sidetracked there. Um, so just just a bit of a uh, a um, history on EM. So EM was developed. Uh, from, by a Japanese professor uh, from Okinawa. And um, he was a university professor and 
and uh, working in an agricultural university in Okinawa. And he, he set out to discover what were the critical microbes for plant growth. And um, in doing so, he discovered um, that it wasn't single species that were important, but it was actually combinations of species. So the micro he, he discovered that microbes need to work together in teams rather than individual um, as individuals. And um, and so after many, many years of looking at different combinations, he settled on a group that that he thought were very important and were not too difficult to produce. Um, and he um, the, the, his his interest and his um, development was also influenced by the Japanese. If any of you have um, have enjoyed Japanese food, you'll know that they have a lot of fermentation in their food. So um, and so uh, that inspired him in terms of the type of microbes that he he um, was examining and, 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 and trialing. And, um, and so he decided that he, uh, that he would like to spread this technology. He believed the technology could have a big impact on the world in terms of um, food production. And so um, he set up an organization to spread the EM technology around the world. Uh, in, in quite a philanthropic way. So they encourage non-profit groups to, to spread the technology within each country. And that's what we did for the first 10 or so years. We, we had a non-profit group. And then, um, because he, his vision was to have, that the technology should be available to anyone in the world and it should be affordable. So um, that's how it began. And he, um, his initial um, focus was on what are the important microbes for soil improvement plant growth. And after spreading, starting to spread the technology, they discovered that the, um, the technology had a much wider um, range of applications than just crop, soil and crop. Um, and then they found it had applications in waste management, um, odour control and various things. So, um, and I'll talk a little bit about, about that as I move through the, um, through my talks. Um, so today, the EM technology is being used in um, more than 130 countries. Uh, it's, all, it's, it's being made a, a, on every continent and um, uh, apart from maybe the Antarctic, um, but, but all of the, the uh, continents that, that, um, that grow crops and, and food. Um, and um, it, has, it has use both in soil applications, um, animal husbandry applications, waste applications, and remediation. Um, there's a lot of them. If you go on the web, you'll find a huge amount of information on it. Because the technology has been uh, successful, I'd say, there are also a lot of um, people that have copied it, copied EM, and um, some of those copies aren't, um, aren't genuine and they, and they actually don't work very well. But they, um, you, you know, human nature is to try and um, take advantage. And so um, you, you'll, you'll, see, you'll see a lot of copies out there as well as genuine ones. Um, the, we, we are, we are connected quite strongly to the original Japanese organization. They're called EMRO, e -M, uh, EM Research Organization from Japan. And they, um, 
they give us technical advice and they check the quality of our, of our EM. And uh, so if you see any connections with EMRO, E-M-R-O, you'll know that that's um, a genuine um, product.